right. Hello, good morning, everyone. Um, it's 10 o'clock, so we can get started now. Uh, to This is practical orientation for human services majors. Uh, since it's a small group, uh, if you guys wouldn't mind, uh, you can turn on your camera so I can talk to somebody other than blank space. Um, unless you have got a really bad hair day, and that's okay, too. Um, hi, Becca. Good morning. So um, how many of you folks are, um, sorry, was somebody saying so? How many of you folks are human services majors? If you don't want to answer, you can answer to the chat too, so I know what's going on. So how many, if you're a human services major, which you should be, um, this only pertains to human service majors. And sometimes people get confused. Um, and if, okay. So Robert is, and if you are a human service uh, major, what program are you in? Go ahead, Becca. Um, I'm a human service major at um, GDC. In the associates program or the bachelor's? Um, I'm doing my uh, associate of applied science. Uh -huh. Um. So I guess. Yeah, you're working on your associates, right? Okay, yeah. Okay. I just wanted just to make sure. Hi, training. Good morning. <laughs> she had to do her hair real quick. Um, are you, uh, Trini, are you um, in the Associates of the Bachelor's Program for Human Services? Associates. Okay. And Robert, I forgot. I think you're in the, 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 the Bachelor's, right? Yes, Bachelor's. Okay, great. So one other thing here, I'm going to pull up uh, something here. Hold on. Okay, let me switch my screen here. Okay, can you all see that? This is the Associates Program um, web page. And I'll go to the bachelor's one in a second for um, for Robert. But um, if you look at the curriculum here, we have the curriculum. Um, it's sparsed out by, you know, first semester for fall, second semester for spring third semester fall and then fourth semester spring. And you should graduate if you go full time. If you don't, then you're gonna have some variation of that. But keep in mind the way this is laid out, all the, the human services courses, except for CPD uh, 116 are only offered within the semester that they're listed, okay? So now that we're in, um, I'm not sure like what semester you guys are in, but keep that in mind. The idea is that you'll have taken the prerequisites in order, and after your first year, in order for you to take practicum one. And the reason we have to do that is one, you have to have a base knowledge of counseling and human services. You also have to have your ethics um, completed and we'll let you take it concurrently. If you hadn't taken it, you can you take it at the same time, it's okay. Um, you also wanna have your basic psychology um, class, you know, the basic substance abuse class, um, all those th should be out of the way before you enroll in human services uh, practicum one, right? In practicum, um, I'll explain a little bit more. So that, mean that means that the only time you can start practicum, if you haven't started it yet, is in the fall. And that's true for the bachelor's program. And that's because in your last full year of, uh, of being at GBC, you take Practicum one in the fall and then practicum two in the spring, and then you graduate, right? And then you go on and work and or go to graduate school or something. So <clears throat> it's really important that you understand. <laughs> I, I know you might be thinking, why is he saying? Because every year, every semester, I got students who are like, can I start my practicum, you know, in the spring? I'm like, no, no, you can't. So I just want you to know and be prepared. Like, take it in the fall. And um and you know, and, and and make sure that you have lined up your practicum site ahead of time. So, um, 
let me just go into the bachelor. I mean, the, you guys are, might be interested in going to the bachelor. So it's so here's the curriculum curriculum for bachelors. And you should guys should know this webpage really well. Like this should be something that you look at and you know like the back of your hand because it is your program, it is your education. So in the bachelor's program, we have it broken down kind of similar to um, first semester, fall, second semester, spring, and then um, and then in the second year, your last year, you'll start practicum one in the spring, or the fall, excuse me, and then practicum two, and then you're gone, gone uh, to graduate school, hopefully. So um, anybody have any questions about that? I know it seems kind of basic, but there's always, uh, you know, somebody who misses the, the you know get the information and then and then so what happens is if you don't like you don't start in your last year and you can't take practicum one you got to wait a whole other year so now a two-year program becomes a three-year program you know and that's a real pain in the ass for you know and i've i've done things for folks like let them do independent study over summer or something like that but it, it just it just there's a it's a big delay so and i wish we had a better way like when we had more students, um, we had a lot of students before the pandemic and then they kind of dipped. They used to let me run practical one and two every semester. Now they're like, no, we can't do that because we don't have enough, we don't have teachers, one, and we don't have enough students. So we end up like one or two students in the class. Right now, this semester, I think practical one has like seven, which is good. That's a good number. And so there'll be seven uh, taking practical two and seven graduating. So that looks good. Okay. So, um, this is not for you guys, that was last time. Okay, so um, if you don't know what field experience is, it, it, kind of self-evident by the title, it's an opportunity you got for you guys to take all the kind of knowledge and learning and training that you get in your, um, your college program and then apply it in the field. So wherever you live, you will solicit a site, and we have a list of sites that are affiliated with us, but if somebody always wants to choose a site that's not affiliated. And I get it. Um, most of our students live in rural communities. And so um, there's sometimes there isn't a, a site available that we are affiliated with. So if you have another site that you want to do, you, you got in mind, that's fine. All you have to do is talk to them, let them know what you're interested in doing. And I have a, a lot of resources that I'm going to give you guys um, and the first thing I'm going to give you is the affiliation. Um, uh, the list of affiliated sites. I'm going to drop that in the chat. So download this. Keep this for you. Oh, I can't do it. This is cannot be sent because it's currently used. Let me close that first. And so these are the affiliated sites. Um, that we have current affiliation agreements, if it's listed, if it's not, then it means that it's expired, like, you know. And what you're gonna do is you'll solicit, you look through the sites, preferably where you probably live, because it's gonna be easiest for you. However, a lot of sites now, not a lot, but some sites have online uh, internships. So you can do like work for, uh, let's say, a suicide prevention call center or something like that. And you can get some experience that way too. And the whole idea is that once you've um, gone through practicum, you have to do 150 hours, which works out to about 12 to 16 hours a week in the semester because you have 16 weeks, right? So you got to have 150 hours completed. Um, but there's always some lag and, and then sometimes people finish early. But <laughs> Within the time frame of the semester, you've got to complete 150 hours. Okay. Um, <laughs> go ahead. Are you talking to me, Trina? Oh no, sorry. I'll, I'll mute you. So if you guys want to talk, just unmute yourself because I'm getting some background noise. So, um, so here's. Um, let's see. So I have to keep changing this. So here's a list of the sites, 
and they're broken down by a geographic location. Here's Elko Battle Mountain, Ely, Nixon. The smaller the place gets, the less there are, right? You know, you kind of figure that out. Um, there's even one in Arizona. Now, some of these sites are affiliated through our radiation program or radiology program, excuse me, uh, nursing or paramedics. So you might look at it and say, well, this isn't someplace I'm like desert imaging. You're not going to, you, you, I mean, it's, it's possible. They might have um, staff that tends to clients or patients that isn't going to be specific to uh, sonography. So, but more than likely, you're going to want to look at sites that are, have to do with human services, substance abuse accounts, uh, counseling, or any kind of counseling of that nature. So like the Nevada Division of Family Service, that one, of course, juvenile detention, yes. Elko County Ambulance, probably not, right? So just kind of use, you, you know, uh, the common sense. If if you're not sure, ask me. I may or may not know, but you can always call them and ask them. So you'll have some contact information to, and you, you're going to approach this just like you would approach getting a job. You're going to contact them and say, I'm a student at GBC and I'd like to do uh, my practicum experience. It is my understanding that we have an affiliation agreement with you. Is there somebody I can talk to about, um, you know, either being interviewed or setting up a meeting um, to become, uh, uh, you know, to, to do my practicum hours there? Um, whenever you talk to them, use professional sp speak and, you know, uh, Speak, excuse me, speak professionally. Uh, if you go to the site, dress, you know, in in professional dress. Um, if it's a more relaxed environment, you could go business casual, but it should always be some form of business dress, not casual at all. Don't show up in a mini skirt, guys. Don't show up in ripped jeans or whatever. Um, you're representing the college, you're representing yourself, you're representing me because these sites know me, uh, our program. We got a lot of really great, great feedback from the folks that do their um, practicum sites. And a lot of times they get hired straight away. So that's great. If that's what you're looking to do. Um, you know, one of the reasons I think we don't have as many students in our, our program is because we require practicum and a lot of students don't want to do it. So, um, but at the same time, when you graduate, you don't just have the education, you've got the experience. So one, you can command a higher salary and two, you're ready to enter the workforce. So there's a lot of benefits there. And while we're talking about this too, um, if any of you guys are interested in going on to graduate studies after your undergraduate, the human services bachelor's program, the associates will prepare you for the bachelor's, you know, and then the bachelor's will prepare you for a master's if you're going into it. And you'll be well, well prepared for the master's. Um, and you can apply to uh, master's programs that are um, obviously human services, which is going to be more of an administrative role. It's not going to be like a clinical practice. Um, marriage and family therapy, master's programs. These are all clinical programs. Uh, clinical social work and uh, professional counselor. So all those areas... Um, in terms of um, the social sciences, our, our degrees are accepted for. We're accredited um, regionally through the Northwest um, uh, accreditation body. And so they'll accept your credits, any, any major university, um, and that's not an issue. So just so you guys know, you don't have to stop here if you don't want to. You have this, the way the degree is set up, it opens doors for um, you know further scholarship and research and study. Okay, so you guys have a list of affiliated sites. If you if it's not on there, talk to them. Then send me the, the uh, information, uh, the contact information. I'll call. This is the this is the way they have it set up. I don't want to do it this way. I used to have you guys go do it, and then they're like, "No, you got to do it." So, so then once you have the contact information, give it to me. I'll contact them. Say, "Hey, you guys are interested in uh, being an affiliated site," and they say yes. Then I'll have our admin send them a, co uh, a contract that they need to get signed and back to us. And the, the affiliation agreement, what it does is it protects the student and the site. So one thing, it provides liability insurance. So if there's some kind of issue, you guys are covered um, and the site is, doesn't have to worry about it. Now, keep in mind, certain sites will require a background check. 
uh, will require you to do, um, if it's a if it's a medical site, they might require some immunization like from uh, tuberculosis or something like that. So when I when I went to work at the, at the hospital, I had to get um, some booster immunizations for tetanus and the other one for tuberculosis too. Um, and uh, so if that's the issue, you got to do that stuff all in advance. So do not wait till the semester starts to start thinking about. Oh, now I think I you know want to think about doing my practicum. No, this should be done. This is why I'm meeting with you guys a year in advance because I want you to start doing this now. Saying, hey, I'm going to start. You know, you don't have to do it. Get everything lined up now, but everything takes time. So getting, you know, an interview um, and I had we had a student who couldn't start their, their practicum and she started in the summer. She did. She did her her job right. But there was all this delay in getting the site affiliated. Um, and I don't know if you guys know this, but GBC has a number of agreements with UNR and they do a lot of our back end stuff. So we're all part of a big system that's Nevada the system of higher education. And so some administrative tasks have been tasked by UNR, like some HR tasks, things like, the, you know. And so now when we get an affiliation agreement signed, we got to send it to UNR's lawyers. And that, for some reason, has taken us a lot longer than it used to. So just so you know, if it's a new site, get get this process started and the, your your part is that if it's a new site, if it's an existing site and it says we've got an affiliation agreement, and you can see here the expiration dates, you know. So, so I saw one of them was like an expire in January. I'm like, well, that's not helpful. But we try to renew them, but people move around, people take on different jobs, and the person that was there is not there anymore. So it just happens, you know. That sometimes you have to get a new site and um, or re renew a site, and we'll we work through that process. It's a little bit cumbersome. I wish there's a better way to do it, but you know, it's just like getting a job. It's never kind of that smooth. Um, let's see. Where are my screens go back here? Okay. So I think I see that's team chat. Does somebody have a question? Do I have places in Ely, Nevada? Um, so you guys receive this. You receive the uh, the file, right? I put it in the chat so you can download it. Um, but I'll, I'll, we can look together. So Ely, yeah, look, look, there's, a, there's a White Pine Care Center. Um, William B. Reary Hospital, Little People's Head Start Counseling. Um, Amy Adams, that sounds like a practice of uh, individual practice. So there's a few on there. But if you know, there's not one that you're, you know, and the other thing I'd like you to think about if you're going to go into a specific field, like, okay, so let me just for example, what do you guys want to do with your degree when you leave here? What's the point of take of, of, of the, this degree program for you? You can either tell me or you can put it in the chat. Hopefully becoming a psychologist later. Okay. Karina, if you want to be a psychologist, you want to be a clinical psychologist, right? Is that what I'm, mm -hmm. I think you mentioned this before. And I, I and I gave you an explanation of how to do that, right? Like, mm -hmm. okay. So what what I would do is I would try to find anything that's related to, to psychology, to clinical psychology. So that might be a behavioral health hospital. In Nevada, there's very few. There's some. In, there's a few in Las Vegas. There's like four or five in Las Vegas. There's maybe two in Reno, um, and that's it. And these are places where people have uh, mental health uh, issues that are so acute they have to be hospitalized. This is not common, but it happens to some people, especially certain pathologies like schizophrenia, bipolar, or people who who abuse drugs and alcohol and they become psychotic from from taking too much right so remember that um substance abuse can mimic uh mental health uh il mental illnesses 
So it can look like they got schizophrenia, but it might be induced by whatever drug. You give enough anything to anybody, they'll they'll become psychotic. You know? So sometimes it's hard to tease that out. And sometimes they won't be honest and forthcoming. They'll say, no, I didn't take anything. And they're like, okay, well, you're just psychotic then, you know, or schizophrenic. Let's put you in, in the, you know, in the psychiatric unit. So this this will help. This will help you. And but what I'm urging you to do is pick a site that's related to what you want to do. Now, okay, Trini told me, Becca and Robert, you haven't answered my question yet. There's only three people in here. I'm not, I'm not asking you guys to like do backflips here. Help me out. Sorry. Doing a addiction and trauma counseling is what I want to focus okay. on. Okay. Yeah. This this program is specifically geared towards that. So when you decide that, you know, on your practicum site, I would try to pick a site that does substance abuse counseling. Um, you don't have to. Uh, okay. Mental health and substance abuse counseling. Okay. So, Becca, um, substance abuse counseling. Once you guys are done with the associates, you can apply for the substance abuse counseling intern license after your associate, 60 hours, excuse me, 60 credit hours. Um, and you you can get the license intern. Uh, and that means an intern license is, a, is that you work under a fully licensed uh, clinician and they supervise you. Once you finish your, your hours and your, um, your bachelor's degree, so after you finish your associates, you go on to your bachelor's, you finish that, you can be fully licensed. So by the time you graduate, or right, right when you graduate, you can get fully licensed as a substance abuse counselor. You're working in the field already, um, and hopefully, if you've done if you've done things right, the way the best way to do it is get your associates, uh, apply to your bachelor, start your bachelor's program. Now you you got your internship license. Do your practicum hours at a substance abuse counseling site. The hours that you gain there will count towards your degree and your license. Um, because you have to do a certain amount of hours, supervised hours. It's 4,000 hours supervised, which takes two years, unless you've taken my bachelor's program and associate's program, and they knock that down to 1,500 hours, which is like less than a year, which is really great because then you graduate and you are, think about that, you're fully licensed. Most, if like, let's say Trini went to a psychology program and she took the psych program and then applied to be a substance abuse counselor, she would have to do 4,000 hours on top of that because she wouldn't have all the addictions courses. And that's what they, they require. They have You have to have 18 credits in uh, addiction courses um, in your graduate, in your, excuse me, in your degree, degree program, 12 if it's a master's. So, um, and Becca mentioned she wanted to do mental health. So uh, clinical mental health is a um, master's degree, a clinical master's degree. So most master's degree programs are what they call plus 30. So you do 120, credits in your bachelor's, and then you do 30 more, which is a, equivalent to one extra year, right? So you go from like a four-year or five-year, and you get a, a like administration degree or finance or whatever. But clinical masters require 60 to 70 extra credits. So that's two to two and a half years. And Trini, the psych a clinical psych is six years. So just so you know, six year program. Okay. And so it, if you're going to do it, that's great. I'm all for it. But I want to prepare you psychologically for the, the road. It's six years on top of your on top of your bachelor's. Um, sorry, I have my window open and the garbage truck is dri driving by. There you go. Um, okay, so going back to Becca's scenario here. So once you once you complete your bachelor's in the last semester or the last year you'll start applying to to master's uh, programs that you you know that are that have one of your the programs you're interested in if it's clinical professional counseling which is what mental health is um a marriage family therapy or, or social work um i'm not a big fan of social work personally because i'm just not a social worker i'm a i'm a therapist i'm a mental health counselor i like to work with people individually on mental health related things Social work has a lot of other aspects to it that you might look for housing, you might look for childcare, you might, you know, all these other ancillary, very important things for people's uh, well-being and, 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 you know, their daily living and, and how they function and survive. But it's, that's not something I'm interested in doing. I don't like um, looking for housing for people. 
I don't like get trying to find you a babysitter. That is, I didn't go to master's uh, programs and do all this education training to do what I consider case management, you know, lower level things. Th th there are workers who do that, but I don't want to do it. I, I, I took a number of psychology courses. I know how to diagnose and treat. And I, that's what I want to focus my, you know, my professional practice on, not the ancillary, you know, very necessary. Because if you don't, you know, everybody knows Ma Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You don't have those base needs met. You can't do anything, right? But that's just not my my um, area of interest um, professionally. So um, the other thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about is that you want to have a resume. Um, and sometimes if you don't have any work experience or work experience that you think is relevant to the site that you're going to be applying to, um, you can you can use some of your coursework, you know, that you've taken X courses. Don't put every single course. You don't have to put like English and math, but like you can put substance abuse counseling. You can do, you know, and you can even put the, the course um, in the syllabus. We have um, kind of the course description. You can put that in there to help them understand what you learned. So they think, OK, this is somebody that, you know, is interested. Now, most of these sites, those professionals have had practicum so they, they know about it and they're sympathetic to your experience they know you're going to school you're getting your practicum hours and so they they have a um kind of sympathy for what you're going through and try to help you out um and a lot of practicum sites like i'm so impressed on how much they do for the students like giving them all these different experiences um the practicum course is five credits because you're doing basically full coursework plus you're going to your practicum site for 10 to 15 hours a week. Um, I did want to mention too that if you don't have a resume or need help, you can go to the G GBC Career Center and they will help prepare a resume for you. Of course, you could probably use chat GBT to make a resume for you now, but, um, but you know, they're there. Um, they can also help you with uh, interviewing skills if that's an issue. Um, most of the folks in my programs, we got the level of soft skills down because we practice it going through the courses. Um, I think I talked about health screenings, background checks, and fingerprints. So if you have any, you know, in your past, if you have some issue, then be up front with it. Up front with them. It doesn't mean that you're going to be automatically disqualified, but sometimes they might have to take other steps or say, you know we can't let you work at the site because of whatever, and you might need to find another site. So time, make time your friend by getting started early. Okay. In this whole process. Um, okay. So to begin your practicum, you have to get written permission from me. So once you're ready to enroll, you'll say, um, and this is actually for practical and practicum two. If you've already taken practical one, my assumption is you know how, what you're doing and you can go ahead and do that. Um, and there's no going to be a prerequisite for that, or we're trying to get rid of it. So for practicum one, you'll email me with the contact information of the site. If it's affiliated, then you just can start your site. If it's not affiliated, then you're going to want to give me the contact information. Um, and then, and then you can, um, We'll start the whole process of getting the affiliation agreement initiated by our administ administration, send over to them, and then they send it back, signed, and then we sign it. And now they're they're affiliated for five years. I think that's the, the um, how long the agreement is until it expires. Um, okay, complete. So you want to start your hours no later than a week after the semester begins. So. Um, a lot of folks start two or three weeks late and then they, they run out of time to get their hours done. So you want to make sure you have enough time or you might have to double up your hours. You're going to also have to think if you, if you work now, I know some, a lot of folks already work. Um, so you're going to need to find childcare. You're going to have to figure out how to, you know, change your schedule around because there's a lot going on. Um, some folks just do their practicum hours on the weekend, and it kind of works out for them. But whatever you need to do. Um, okay, so uh, let's see. Perform a regular ten site during the period of hours. Yeah. So after you have agreed to what hours you're going to be there, be there at those times. Don't change it up. Don't call out. Um, they're doing you a favor, and so to say, they're taking on another employee. Now you're doing them a favor too, because you're giving them work. Um, 
but they're providing training and, and resources and, and time they're out of their day to help develop you as a professional. So you kind of want to just have a mutual respect um, for that agreement and, 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 and do what it takes to, to maintain that professional attitude. Um, oh, I did want to mention to, to Becca, if you're going to go into a mental health uh, master's degree or uh, counseling uh, program, you're going to do like, I think it's four semesters of practicum. First year is called practicum. And then second years are called internship. And it's kind of like going to medical school. You know, you do, you do different, you work at different sites and you, you work straight up as a counselor. You are already <laughs> is, you know, um, except for you're not, you don't have your license and you're not, uh, uh, you're not getting paid, <laughs> you know, but, um, but there's a lot of sites you can do that at, and I just want you to recognize like the time commitment because it's going to be, it's around, I think, uh, six to 800 hours. I had to do a thousand hours. They changed the, the requirement because people couldn't finish in time. Um, so now it's six to 800 hours. And then once you graduate and get licensed, you're an intern with a master's degree, a clinical professional counselor intern, and you have to do 3000 hours of face-to-face uh, work with clients and you'll be under clinical supervision that entire time, which usually takes two to three years. So you got four years undergrad, two and a half to three years in your master's. Let's just call it three. We're up to seven now. And then you graduate and apply for your license and you've got two to three more years on top of that. Nine to 10 years to make it a mental health counselor. Okay. Um, so a clinical psychologist, four years undergrad six years in your doc program because you don't you don't do masters you go undergrad doc if you drop out they're nice sometimes sometimes they'll give you a master's degree if you don't make it but not all programs will do that so now you're up to 10 years and then once you graduate from your clinical site two years as a postdoc under as a psychology assistant under the supervision of a licensed psychologist so 12 12 years to become a clinical psych okay I don't want to squash anybody's dreams, but I want you guys to have realistic. This is a marathon. You know, you're in it for the long haul. And if you if you have any questions of like, do I really want to do this? Or am I, is this what I want? It, you know, that's normal. C come talk to me because I want you guys not to make a mistake in your career path and then regret it. Because I'll tell you, when I graduated my master's program, there was probably 32 of us. And I will tell you less than, 15 of us are practicing. There's probably 12 right now that are, you know, that I know of. Uh, a lot of them went on to do something else or real estate agent or got married, had kids or whatever. But, um, and that's fine, you know, but I mean, I'm like, why, why go through all that? You know, why go through a master's program when you can do something else with your time? And it's, and then there's resources like there's scholarships and there's, you can, you can only have so many people in a master's program because of um, constraints on the program. So it's competitive. So they, they weed out people who, who, you know, who for whatever reason they deem not as viable. And what they're really looking for is can this person finish this program? Are they financially stable enough? Do they have enough resources? Um, and that can be, of course, student aid and things like that, financial aid. Um, do they have the academic um, acumen to complete the program because they don't want it, somebody to start the program and then drop out. That's just a waste of their time. And then you've got um, graduate studies are completely different than undergraduate. It's a lot more you're on your own, you know, there's a lot less structure. Especially because you're spending, you know, practically two years at, at, a, um, at an internship site, you know, getting your hours. Okay, um, so the, one of the other things is you're going to have to um, take uh, keep track of your hours. So like every week you have a log sheet. It's in the it's in the handbook. If they have their own log sheet, I don't care if you use that. But at the end of the semester, you'll have to send me. Um, it's an assignment in the course. You have to send all the hours you completed signed. I need them signed. Don't just like send me a printout of whatever. It, it can be a printout with signed by the supervisor. That's fine. I'm, I'm kind of trust you guys, but I've got to have something because you know our um, our program has to have some you know 
confirmation that we're doing things that we're, we're supposed to. We're also beholden to accrediting bodies who will at times audit our courses to make sure that we're doing what we say we're doing. So um, you'll send that up and then you'll get credit for your hours. Um, it's not as, in, I don't think it's as intense um, in terms of coursework. We don't have like big assignments. Um, it's usually just your quizzes, your discussion, which is specifically about your practicum experience that week. Uh, I try to keep it more focused on that. That way you guys kind of process what you're going through. Sometimes there's like big days, like somebody tried to commit suicide or, you know, the cops were called or what, and then other, other weeks, things are kind of tranquil and they're just kind of rolling along, but you get to see how you'll use all the kind of skills that we're talking about in practice. And it makes, it makes it for a better um, experience. And then you're kind of better prepared to work in the field uh, once you graduate. So um, you'll house, you also have like um, a kind of a learning plan that, that you'll work out with your site supervisor. And that'll say, this is what I plan on learning throughout this semester. And you guys kind of come up with something, some goals, um, some supporting goals at a time frame that you should go have an opportunity to learn those things. Um, I wanted to show you to also, so if it's a new site, uh, we have a letter. Uh, and I'll drop it into the chat here. Um, but also bring it up so we can look at it. So this is an introductory letter just to kind of explain to a new site what practicum is, what the requirements are. Let me see that. So this is, you know, kind of our letterhead. And then I just kind of go through what field experience is about, what they agree to here. And then um, the contact information for our, our department admin, and then my contact information if they have any questions. So um, it explains here that all sites must agree to the affiliation agreement signed and authorized um, and return to our department to Elizabeth Stanley. She will, con she will contact them and get the affiliation agreement going. This is only if it's not affiliated. If it's already affiliated, you don't have to worry about this. But even sometimes if if um, personnel has changed to the site, it's good to when you when you present yourself, either email them or call them in the new follow up email. Say, hey, you know, I sent over um, our introductory letter for the practicum experience and just if you have any questions and you can the contact information is on there for for program director as well as our department admin. So. Um, Okay, so you have that too. Any questions? Besides, you know, I think we got those questions. That should be all. Not really a question, but just a warning to everybody else. I started on an off year for the for the practicum, so I am, I'm going to end up only taking my practicum and no other classes. Oh wow! Just because the, with the prerequisites and starting that off year, the way everything timed out, I will only have that one class. It's frustrating, but you know. Yeah, get... no, it's a good warning that you you start in the you know, um, yeah, and sometimes that happens. But the good thing is you only have to worry about practicum that semester too, though. Um, and then if you're looking at graduate program, uh. I'm always trying to stay ahead of the game. So like one of the things we do in our associates program, your last semester will let you start taking the first course of the bachelor's program. Like you can take the families um, and addictions program, which is uh, HMS 322. That way you start to get ahead, right? A little bit. Sometimes it can make your, um, your experience a little bit easier if you have one less class to take. You know, you're not stressed out financially, it's a little bit better because it spreads it out and two, then you don't have to take so many courses. Um, and then you can always take, you know, I always tell people don't take, you know, this is not high school. Don't take summers off. Get, some, life keeps going. They're online classes. It doesn't mean you don't get to take vacation. You know, I was in my master's program. I worked full time, seven to four. 
uh, I worked at the city. I was an a IT specialist and I take, I go to my graduate classes at night. We had one from, I used to leave work early. We had a class start at four, um, four to what, six 20 or something like that. Or, and then another class seven to 10 o'clock or something. It was nuts, but that was it. And that was my schedule. And then I go after that, I would go to the library and study for two until I couldn't study anymore and then start over. And I did that for three years because I could only go part time because I was working full time. Right. So it can be done. It, it asks a lot from you, but it's 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 it, it, and you can manage it. And you can still have fun. You can still have a personal life. You know, you don't you you become more disciplined. And that's really what a program does. It disciplines you. So life is not hard when you're undisciplined. Everything is hard. Doing your laundry is hard. Uh, getting up to go get a pizza is hard. <laughs> but when you're disciplined, everything becomes easier. And I think the, the you know, I hear a lot of people say, oh, college isn't worth it. College is, well, look at the people that are successful. No, you're not, you're, unless you're Elon Musk or you're Bill Gates and you just have to be a genius, but most of us aren't. Um, you don't need college. You know, they'll say, oh, that's useless. I'm like, that's because you have 160 IQ. But we need time to develop. You know, we need uh, space and experiences. We're not freaks. And that's great. I really admire them, to be honest with you. I wish I could do math in my head like that. I, I can't. But what I will tell you is that I went from becoming a mediocre student into a professor where I pose my own research. You know, and it turned me into uh, a force and it gave me the strength to one, look at any kind of research, digest it, decide whether this is valid or, or not valid, uh, discern what information is useful and not useful for the field, become a leader in my profession where I'm asked to come speak at medical schools and different places, um, do trains for professionals. And it, it gave me that confidence and not everybody gets to do that. And it's, it's, a, it's a privilege to be honest with you. We pay to go to school, but I think it's a privilege in life to be able to be of service in this capacity. I was a technician for 17 years before I went back and got my degrees. And I was 35 years old before I, when I finished my master's program. And I'm, most people are like, your life's over, man. But it wasn't, it just started uh, for me. And and I, I, there isn't a day I regret it. I would regret if I was still an IT specialist changing out keyboards and hard drives, even though I make more, made more money than, than back then with inflation that I do now as a professor, I still don't regret it because I get to do what I like to do. I work in the field that I enjoy. I work with people that I, you know, that are interested in the same things. That's basically what you're saying is when you're going to become a, a clinician is I want to help people that are in need. I want to make the world a better place. I want to try to save people from themselves if I can, you know, we can only help them help themselves but there is an opportunity there to help inspire people. And it's such an important work. Um, we're some of the, we have the worst numbers for, for providers um, in, in the country. Um, and in the rural areas, it's even worse. And you guys know this. And it's funny because I think people, like I live in Las Vegas, so we think, oh, these rural communities must be so nice to live in. They're really quaint and, you know, everyone knows everybody. They don't realize the, the amount of drug abuse, alcohol abuse, uh, domestic violence issues. Um, there's just the pro, people. I, I grew up in Las Vegas, but when I grew up in Las Vegas, it was kind of rural, and it wasn't like it is today. So I kind of understand not not the same thing as you know like Elko or something or Fallon. But I've lived in Nevada my whole life. I used to work in the rurals as a technician, um, of course, and as now as a professor, I've been all throughout Nevada, working in different capacities, but. They there are really serious problems there. And the other problem is when you go away to college and you become a professional, you stay where you went to college. So then we lose that. It's called a brain drain. We lose that in, that intellectual capacity to serve your community. So one of the things I really like about our program is that you get to stay in your locale. You get to stay in your hometown, become a professional. You know, the you know, the landscape, you know, the folks, you know what's going on. You know the players because it's a small town. And then you become, you know, um, kind of uh, a professional within your own community. You become a resource. You become a leader in that field because they need you uh, and you need time to develop. So and then you get to help the community out. You know, it's that's it's kind of a win win because you love that community. 
um, when they kind of import doctors. So like, I don't know if you guys know this, but like rural communities have initiatives by the federal government that says, well, okay, if you're a doctor, nurse, or mental health counselor, you can get your student loans waived or whatever, um, or, or whatever. Sometimes there's a, just a financial award they give you just to practice there. But then people don't like it. And then once they're done, they leave. They'll do their two years and then they're gone. So you might see doctors or professionals kind of cycle in and out of your communities. I don't know exactly because I don't live there, but um, I know there are not enough counselors. We have 100, less than 100 substance abuse um, uh, supervisors in, in, in the rurals or in all of Nevada. All of Nevada has it. There's one in Pahrump. And if you go through my program and you get licensed, you can become a supervisor. And now you can start training new, new providers. So there's all kinds of like um, opportunities for growth in this career. And I just wanted you guys to know that it's very much needed. I think it's interesting work. There's a lot of paperwork, but you get used to that. And the computers are making it a lot easier. So it's getting easier and easier for the paperwork. It used to be a lot more intense. Um, but and, and I do, I, I mean, I, I work in the mental health field enough that I know where all the different providers and what their their educational requirements are, what their licensure requirements are. And if you're not sure, well, look it up, go to the state board and check it out and say, hey, you know, I want to be a licensed psychologist. I need to look at this. Don't wait till you're done and then, go, then start looking at it because you might, it's like, you'll, you'll, you'll make, you'll go into dead ends. You'll, you'll not realize, oh, I should have done this first. I should have done that next. And I should have this in order, you know, so just keep that in mind. Um, any other questions? I'm going to drop in my PowerPoint presentation because in case there's like any things you forget you want to go through. Um, I want to save it to a PDF first. I want to do that. If, if you have any questions, okay, I don't know what's going on. And I know there's not a lot of folks here, um, but but a lot of that's because this isn't a, a, a fall year. So most people know that we'll, we will have another practicum um, orientation in the, <clears throat> in the spring. Um, but it's good that you're here now. That way, in case, you know, you kind of know what to expect. So, I've actually found quite a few places. I live in Fernley, so I'm about 30 minutes east of Reno. And I've found quite a few places out here that are willing to do an agreement with the GBC. And I emailed you before about that 988 system that the college is going to use now. Mm -hmm. and one of the companies is set in Reno, and they're willing to do an agreement with us and it's 99% uh, remote after oh, you do okay. like an initial training. So if there's other people in this area, I'd be you know, more than willing to share what I found so far. It's, it, it was a struggle to find it, but now that it's there and, you know, I don't want everybody else to go through the same struggle, I guess. Yeah. It, I mean, it's, it's a lot, you know, it's not easy. Um, I had to find, when I was in my practicum, I had to find a site that was, open after four because I had to work, you know. Um I don't I cannot something's wrong with Zoom. I can't drop this one in. Uh, what happened here? No. All right.
Yeah, ever since COVID, a lot of these places are realizing, well, we don't need everybody to come down to the office if they want to do remote uh, sessions. That's great, which I think is great. To be honest, if I had to go to a therapist, I don't want to drive through traffic and then park and then, you know, and then it, you guys live in rural areas and it's like below 40 below or something. I, can't, I was looking at the weather. I was like, oh, my God, how do these poor folks live up there? Um, I can't deal with cold. I'm a desert rat and I always will be. And every time I go up there, I'm like, I want to die. Um, okay. Is there another way to share a file in Zoom besides the chat? I don't see it. I did, I dropped, you guys got the other files, right? Yeah, okay. I'm like, was there a limit or? I, uh, I try to, you know, I basically just drag and drop it over. This. It's just not allowing me. Uh, turn chat off. Turn it back on. Oh, it's not like that. Also, have a ton of windows open. I might be pissing it off. Okay, so just to you know, hopefully everyone has kind of a feel of what they need to do next. Like I would be looking at sites, um, then check that um, Excel sheet that I sent you to see if that site is affiliated. If it's not, then start the whole process of getting affiliated. All right, everybody clear on that? Um, and then once you've started that process, then you can request I from me to send me an email, say, I need permission to enroll in, in practicum one. And then I will send that request to Elizabeth, because, you know, even though I'm the director and the professor, I still have to ask her for permission to let my students. And I asked them, like, why don't you guys just give me access? And they're like, no. I'm like, okay. So I don't, I don't, I don't care enough to fight about it. I'm like, okay, I just then I'll just annoy you with emails. I'm just trying to make it as easy, easy as possible. Um, okay, I'm getting pissed now because this is not, I think I have to restart my um, Zoom because it doesn't like what's going on, but I'm gonna send you guys a different, I'll send you a, a, a Google Drive link to that file. Okay, try that. So that's my PowerPoint, I think. Maybe didn't like it because it was too big. Because it doesn't have any pictures. That way, if there's something you forget, you can kind of read through it to remind yourself. And then if you have any questions after that, um, feel free to email me or ask, ask what's going on. Um, so we're almost out of time. Just want to make sure nobody has any more questions. Uh, you guys are all slated to start your practicum in the fall. Is that right? And I'll probably send an announcement in, or have Do, uh, Dr. Wentz send an announcement in his his courses that after you've taken 101 and 102 to, to enroll. We're kind of, we're getting bigger because we were down to like, I think four graduates last spring and now we're going to be up to seven. So I think the numbers are coming back up, but um, it's always a struggle. So I, I wish our class were a little bit bigger, just a little bit, just so the folks had more interaction. But because um, some classes only have like three students and it kind of makes it tough to, to do your discussion posts because they're like, nobody's posted or um, or you're talking to the same people. You don't have new experiences. So um, with that, anything else? OK, as is your. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, is your contact information on this one as well? Uh, in case we have any other questions, because I have written your stuff down, but it's 
put away right now at the moment and my son likes to touch everything and write on everything yeah. so right um yeah let me see where is it uh yes on the last slide of the of the file that i share with you it's got my email and my cell number okay so thank you you guys can even text me but just i don't save student numbers just because i don't save client numbers either so if my phone number is lost people don't know who it's who um so if you do text me just say hi this is trini and uh you know i have questions and, and we can either set up a zoom meeting or if it's something simple i can just answer right away i only respond during business hours if you like you're at the bar and having two drinks you're like oh let me don't don't expect me to respond at like you know 2 a.m or something like that um so I, I will get to you if it's done like a lot of times students will message me or email me on the weekends and i don't respond because it's my weekend i'm off so i will respond on monday um i might forget so they're just because if it comes to myself uh and this is because we have a small program and i'm the director you know there's only two of us me and, and gerardo or dr wentz and so i really like, try to get back to you guys as soon as possible like as soon as you send me i get a message you know because i want to get i want to get rid of it i want to be like I, this is done i don't have anything else because i'll forget i got too many requests coming in um but i will tell you when i worked at nlv i had over a thousand students over 26 courses and i had 10 part-time instructors and three full-time instructors i i don't know i don't know anybody i I know and it'd be lucky if I ever responded to one of your emails. Like, so I think it's cool, you know, that, that you guys are here. You get the the same training and education that you get at, at a big university. You don't pay an enormous amount of money. You know, basically one semester at UNL or one year at UNLV or UNR costs what it takes you to get your degree, your, you know, your associate's degree here. So, and you're get it's an accredited. It can transfer right up to you know university, just like my psychology. I got a psych degree in, in UNLV. I wish I hadn't. I wish I had come to GBC or went to CSN. I didn't know. You know, I didn't know at the time. And so when I see people spending all the, and complaining about how much how expensive college is, it's really not that expensive if you take a. And we have students from different states taking our program, so it's so uh, inexpensive. But the quality is the same. Trust me. Trust me, I, it's better because I taught at UNLV and I taught at Nevada State and I've taught at UNR. And I will tell you the quality is better because I have more time to dedicate to the program where there I was just like in and out, you know, like you could only get done what you can get done and you're doing the best you can, but it's just not enough. And here, you know, they they make sure that they give me all kinds of time to do extra things to make sure the program's tuned up. Get it, We're getting into another accreditation through NADAC. Um, so it's, it's in a lot of ways, it's better. Um, and it's like, nobody cares if you're a clinician, if you're a licensed person, nobody cares where you went to school. If you went to Harvard to get your nursing, de nursing degree and got your license in nursing, or you went to community college and got your nursing and you're both working as licensed nurses, do you think anybody cares? No, you're going to get paid the same too. So, and you're not going to have spent so much, you know, I mean, I, if, if you have the money and, the, you know, whatever, and you want to have this great experience, but I, I just think people don't realize like college to me is to prepare you for a career or develop your mind. Um, and you can't really put price tags on your life experience. Like when you, when you think about your career and most of us have to work to, to live, but you get to do something you like to do rather than something you have to do. How can you put a price tag on that? How can you say, well, who cares if it costs money? I mean, yeah, don't be exorbitant, but you get a you get a degree from GBC. I mean, it doesn't cost that much, and you have the same life experience and opportunities that anybody else, any other clinician has. You know, um, <clears throat> I went to school with people in my graduate program who graduated from Ivy League schools, um, UMass. Uh, where else? Tulane and um, Champaign University in uh, Illinois. I mean, big schools. And I was like, whoa, these guys are so smart. They were not any smarter than I was. <laughs> and I, you know, I had done my my undergrad at UNLV, CSN and then UNLV. So I just hope you guys appreciate the experience you get, the opportunities you're you're going to get, and and not worry so much about where it's from, but know that these programs are aligned 
the curriculum is lined with accreditation standards. So it means that we all have to give you the same thing. We're, we're required to, to some degree. I mean, we have we have a latitude on how we deliver it, but we're giving you the same thing. I, actually, I, I don't want to tell you this, but our programs are harder. Um, my boss even told me, she's like, I went and looked in your classes. And she's like, why are, you, why are your classes so hard? I'm like, because they need to be, because they need to know this stuff. They need to they need to read it. They need to process it. They need to demonstrate it. They need to think about it. And then they need to show me that they remember. And if I said, they're working with client. It's not like, you know, they have to know this stuff as well as the degree um, that, that I think is, is, is responsible for a professional to know. Um, she's like, well, you could, you know, cut down your classes to eight week classes. Like there's too much information. They can't process it all. She's like, well, you could just, you know, kind of cut some of that. I was like, nope, it's not gonna happen. So we had this kind of tug of war and she left me alone now. And, um, but I, I mean, I get what she's saying. She's like, if we get through students faster, more people graduate on time. But I'm like, yeah, but they don't get what they need. So um, there's always a balance between the business of education and the philosophy on why become educated, you know? And it's so important that we have smart people that have developed their intellect, that have critical thinking skills, that are making good judgments in a professional settings. And when you don't, you have all kinds of bad things happen. People uh, having bad ethics and bad boundaries and taking advantage of patients or doing things for money that they shouldn't do. And, you know, but when you do something because you care about it, when you become a professional, you're less likely to become, to violate those ethics. Cause you're like, no, I've always been doing this for the right reasons. Why would I now sacrifice all that for, you know, so extra paycheck or, a favor or something like you know, that that just doesn't really work, work out. So, okay, uh, I guess we're out of time, but thank you guys. Um, and if you have any questions, my contact information's on there. You, you should, it's on all the syllabi too. So you should, if you ever forget, you could just Google my name and you will find me. You will find, because <laughs> my psychology today page has um, my contact information. Just let me know you're one of my students. So I don't think you're a client that's trying to get services. Um, yeah, and uh, you know, good luck on the rest of the semester. And I'll probably see you guys. I think it's next week or two weeks from now. We're going to have our our second uh, symposium. So, all right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks.